Hi and welcome to this video which is part of the transition year higher level maths algebra revision module. This algebra revision module is a revision of all junior cert higher level algebra and is to assist you with the transition into leaving cert higher level maths. This video is going to cover fractions and I would just say if you have not already watched the video on factorization or if you've not already revised factorization, it may be best to do that before watching this video. In fractions today, we're going to look at simplifying fractions, adding and subtracting multiple fractions and multiplying and dividing fractions. So the first example we're going to look at then is a simplify. So we have a fraction here, it's an algebraic fraction. We have x's above and below the line. So in order to simplify, we must first break it down into the building blocks to see, is there anything common above and below the line? And for us, this means that we have to factorize both the top and the bottom line. The easiest way I think that you can do this is by separating out the lines and um, it can become quite messy if you try to keep it in a fraction. So I the method that I'm going to use here is taking the top line, working with it, taking the bottom line, working with it and then putting it back together at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to label. So the top line and the bottom line and we'll take out this top line here. So we have x to the power of 3 plus 7x squared plus 12x. So if you were unsure about your factorization, there is a video uploaded which goes through all the different types of factorization. This factorization here may look somewhat like a quadratic. However, it's not exactly a quadratic because it has an x to the power of 3. And quadratics, we deal with have an x squared as the biggest power in the in the expression. So we need to look at our other types of factorization. So if we run through them, is there anything common to all terms? So highest common factor and the answer is yes, there is an x common to all three terms. So we'll take that out. So that's my first type of factorization. So I take out an x and I'm left with an x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now it's important to notice at this point that you now have a quadratic in the bracket. So in the factorization video, we looked at where there was multiple steps for factorization. So where one type of factorization was not enough. And this is a good example of that. So we now have a quadratic. So we're going to use the guide number method. The guide number we have is the 1 by plus 12, which just gives me plus 12. And the factors are both going to be the same sign because it's a plus 12. We need to get them to add to plus 7. So we get plus 3 and plus 4. So at this point, I'm just going to start using square brackets just to ensure we don't get confused with the brackets and um, where they start and where they end. So I've rewritten, sorry, I've rewritten my 7x here um, as plus 3x plus 4x. So now I'm going to do my grouping. So in the first two terms, x squared plus 3x um, and x is common. And in the second set, a 4 is common. So now my check for this is, are my brackets the same? Yes, they are. They're both x plus 3. So they are now common. So I'll pull those out and it leaves me with an x plus 4. So to clean that up, we'll just drop those square brackets. They're not required anymore. And that is the top line fully factorized. So let's move on to the bottom line then. Here we have a straightforward quadratic. We have an x squared, an x and a number. So our guide number here is minus 3. To factorise it to give us a plus 2, we're going to use plus 3 and a minus 1. So we've just again now rewritten our plus 2x as minus 1x plus 3x. The order here, if you wrote a plus 3x minus 1x, um, it should still work and there will be no issue. So in the first two, x squared minus 1x, there's an x common. 
and that leaves me with x minus 1. In our second, in our second group here, there's a 3 common, and that leaves me with x minus 1. My check is, are both my brackets the same? So yes, they are, so I'll take that out, x minus 1, and leaving us with x plus 3. So now we fully factorise the top and we fully factorise the bottom line. So let's put them back together. So in the top line, we had our answer here. In the bottom line, we had our answer here. So we've just put them back together. And as you can see, when we put them back together, both above and below the line, there is an x plus 3. So these can be cancelled. So because they're common above and below the line, we can cancel them out. This leaves us with x bracket x plus 4 over x minus 1 and we can multiply back out that top line which gives me x squared plus 4x over x minus 1. So that is the simplifying algebraic fractions and this is most this is the most likely way that you will be asked your factorization um, as part of a question. It doesn't mention anything about factorization. You have to know that you have to do factorization in order to simplify the fraction. So this next example, we're going to look at adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So um, a similar method is used for both. In this example, we have both adding and subtracting. So we're going to use a common denominator. So in order to add or subtract any fractions, you need to have a common denominator. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the denominators that we have. So we have an x plus 2. We have an x plus minus 3. And here we have a quadratic. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this quadratic. So we have our x squared minus x minus 6. We're going to use our guide number method to try to figure out what my factors are. Okay, so let's rewrite this x squared plus 2x minus 3x minus 6 x is common here so we have an x plus 2 minus 3 is common here and we have an x plus 2 the check is are my brackets the same yes they are so i can pull those out because they're common and that leaves me with an x minus 3. so actually if we want to rewrite this we have 1 over x plus 2 minus 3 over x minus 3 plus 4 over x squared. No, apologies. So this time we're going to rewrite this using the factors we've just found, which were x plus 2, x minus 3. So now we're going to get our common denominator. So we're going to look for what's called our lowest common multiple of x plus 2, x minus 3, and x plus 2, x minus 3. And hopefully you can see that using this, using these two factors here will create a common denominator for us because they contain the x plus 2 and they contain the x minus 3. So our lowest common multiple is x plus 2x minus 3 and that is the common denominator. Okay so let's take a look what this looks like for us x plus 2. So if we want our common denominator to be x plus 2x minus 3 what we're missing here we'll put it in in green is an x minus 3 and I don't want to change my fraction so whatever I do to the bottom I'll also do to the top. Then I come along I have my minus 3 over x minus 3. This time what I'm missing is my x plus 2. So again whatever I do to the bottom I do to the top. And now my last fraction there's nothing that I need to do since that common denominator is already there. Okay, 
So now I have three fractions, all have the same denominator, so all have the common denominator. I'm now going to combine them. So I have one bracket x minus three. Be really careful, we need this negative here. So minus three x plus two, and that's plus four. And now what we've done is we're going to combine these fractions. So instead of writing the same denominator three times, we're just going to write it once. So we have an x plus two and an x minus three. And now I just need to tidy up. So in the top line, I have x minus three, minus three x minus six plus four. And that's all over x plus two x minus 3. So now we'll see what do we have in common. So we have an x here, we have a minus 3x. Um, and then we have a minus 3, a minus 6, and a plus 4. So an x minus 3x gives me a minus 2x. Minus 3 minus 6 gives me minus 9. Plus 4 gives me a minus 5. And that's all over x plus 2, x minus 3. So if at this point you want to multiply out the bottom line, that's absolutely fine. We already know that it's equal to this, so we can just rewrite that. So minus 2x minus 5 all over x squared minus x minus 6. So the third example we're going to look at is where we're multiplying algebraic fractions. So in order to multiply fractions, we multiply across the top and we multiply across the bottom. Okay, there's no need for common denominators. There's no need for any, any changes really. Um, although factorizing, if we can, can make our lives a little bit easier. So you'll notice that anywhere we can factorize, we are factorizing because that will help us see um, it will help us to see if there is any cancellation that can happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my line here. This is my top line here and this is my bottom line. So let's deal with those slightly separately. We'll deal with them over here, top line. So my top line here is x squared plus x minus 2. So my guide number here is minus 2. So if I have this as a plus 2, and a minus 1, I'll be able to rewrite this as x squared minus x plus 2x minus 2. So my x is common in the first instance, so x minus 1, and a plus 2 here, x minus 1. So my check is, are both my brackets the same? Yes, they are, so they're common, so let's pull them out, and x plus 2. So that's my top line factorised. So let's look at the bottom line then. So my bottom line is x squared plus 2x minus 3. My guide number here then is minus 3. So if I have a plus 3 and a minus 1, that will add up to plus 2x, exactly what I want. So we'll have x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3. And we'll take out the x in the first instance and a plus 3 in the second one. And our check again is, are my brackets the same? Yes, they are, which is great. And then I'm going to put an x plus 3 here. Okay. So now let's put it back together. So here I have an x minus 1 and an x plus 2 all over an x minus 1 and an x plus 3 and I'm going to be multiplying that by 2 apologies now 
2x plus 6 over 4x minus 4. So remember our rule is multiply across the top. So to show multiplication, we're just going to use our brackets. So we already have x minus 1. We have an x plus 2. And we're going to multiply that by 2x plus 6. On the bottom, we're going to have an x minus 1, an x plus 3, a 4x minus 4. So at this point, you might see that we actually do have an x minus 1 above and below the line. So we can simplify that. Okay. So now what we're left with is an x plus 2, 2x plus 6, all over x plus 3, 4x minus 4. Okay, so you might notice now that there is a 2x plus 6 on the top line, which actually could be factorised, and a 4x minus 4 on the bottom line that could be factorised. And they can both be factorised by taking out um, a common factor. So here, the common factor of 2x plus 6 is 2, so we'll take out a 2 and we're left with x plus 3. And on the bottom line, we can take out a 2 here as well. So we have an x plus 3. We take out a 2. Um, and we're left with 2x minus 2. So what you might notice now is we have an x plus 3 common above and below. And we have a 2 common above and below. So our final answer then is going to be x plus 2 over 2x minus 2. So if you wanted at the very start to factorise both of these as well, that would be absolutely fine. Um, often I think people can really quickly see that there is a quadratic that needs factorisation, but maybe you won't see the easier ones like something <coughs> apologies, um, like something that is common. So what I've shown you here is how you can deal with that if you see it later on in the question. There's no issue. So example four is dividing algebraic fractions. So um, division is really important when it comes to fractions because we use something that's called the reciprocal. Now, you would have encountered the reciprocal back in primary school when you did division um, with fractions. However, maybe you didn't use the word. So we will see this word in other places. So it's a good word to have. And what that means is basically the fraction is turned upside down. OK, so in the most basic example, if you want to get half of something, and I'll just give you an example. So if I want to get half of 10, it's half multiplied by 10, which gives me 5. And um, using the reciprocal of that, so we can have 10 divided by 2 over 1, which is just 10 divided by 2 will give me the same thing. So in order to help us, we're going to use the fact that to divide by a fraction like here, we can instead multiply by its reciprocal. OK, so in order to divide by a fraction, we can multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm just going to get rid of that there. So in this example, we're dividing by 4 over 4x squared minus 1. So we're going to use the reciprocal. So what this becomes, so straight away, 2x minus 1 multiply by 4x squared minus 1 over 4. Now, it becomes much easier because we can now use our rules of multiplication, multiply across the top line, multiply across the bottom line. Like in the last example, though, um, it might be better for us to do a little bit of factorization first. So we have a 4x squared minus 1. Um, you should be able to see that factorization here is the difference of two squares. So it's going to be 2x to be squared minus 1 squared, which gives me 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. 
Okay, so let's put those back together. So we'll have 2 over 2x minus 1 multiply by 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. And to help us, we can even factorize the 4, which is 2 by 2. So now, <clears throat> let's do the multiplication. So again, remember, multiplication is just shown by brackets. So we're just putting our brackets next to each other. Um, here we'll have 2x minus 1, 2 by 2. So hopefully at this point we see that there are some things in common both above and below the line. So 2x minus 1 and a 2x minus 1 and a 2. So what we're actually left with is 2x plus 1 all over 2. And we can actually simplify that further. So this is the same as 2x over 2 plus 1 over 2, which can be simplified to x plus a half. Okay, so it's really, really important to remember that we can use what's called the reciprocal when we divide. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we can multiply by its reciprocal. And then we work through any question like it was a multiplication question.